Hello and welcome to Eva's House of Spirit. I'm Eva and today I want to talk about something that um, I think should be discussed more. I want to talk about um, the belief that some hold that one should practice whatever path um, comes from one's culture or um, nationality or place of familial origin. Personally, I don't believe that you necessarily have to practice within your like culture or ethnicity or whatever. I, I don't find that that's necessary. Now, some people believe that supposedly if you are, let's say, um, let's say you're Native American and, you know, some people believe, well, if you are going to practice magic, you should practice Native American practice because you're a Native American. Well, I understand how they believe it's a upholding of one's culture to practice according to one's roots and that can be good if you find that resonates with you however if for some reason and this does happen sometimes if you find that the path of your people does not resonate with you you don't have to practice it and furthermore it's not like you can only practice within the confines of the spirituality and magical traditions of your nationality or ethnicity. It's not like you're limited to that. You know, there's more to you than your physical body. There is more to you than where you came from. It is a decent part of you. It's a valid part of you. But you're also you. You know, I, I raised an important point with someone. We were having a discussion, and I said, um, I'm just curious, do you think that someone should follow the path of their people just for the sake of upholding their culture and heritage and the way that their people, um, you know, magically and spiritually practiced? Or do you think it's possible to uphold one's culture and identity and yet still maintain your individuality. In other words, um, for example, let's take um, Christianity or Catholicism, things like that. A lot of people in those paths, not everybody, but a lot of people, they, they come to practicing those paths because that's what their parents did and their parents' parents and their parents' parents' parents and so on. That's just what they always knew. It's what they were taught. It's how they were raised. So that's why they, they follow those paths sometimes but I wonder sometimes when people do that do they take the time to individually stop and assess like is this path really for me do I really believe in this or am I doing this because I was told this is the right way or this is just the way that the family does it you know what I mean something should really um, resonate with you on a deeper level something should be meaningful to you if you're going to follow it I think and this also goes for like if you choose to completely not follow anything let's say you were raised um, in a religious family whether it be uh, alternative religion or whether it be you know orthodox uh, mainstream religion <coughs> but let's say one day you come to the feeling that religion of any kind is not for you well, you know what? That's fine, too. You can still, <coughs> excuse me, honor your culture, your nationality, you know, your heritage, whatever you want to, you know, whichever. You can still be proud of that and uphold that and connect with that without being pressured to do as, the, as everyone's done before you, if that's not for you. That's what I personally believe, and you may disagree with me, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, also, I find that some people um, 
within the magical and spiritual community, they have issue in certain um, paths with people that are not associated with um, the, let's say, culture or ethnicity that uh, is that a given path um, came out of or sprang from. You know, if someone's, let's say, for example, take hoodoo. Some people don't like that um, that white people sometimes practice hoodoo. Not always. I mean, I haven't found a lot of that, but some people are like, you know, you're culturally appropriating, you know, our beliefs and our traditions and, uh, you know. While I understand that there is a richness to, you know, to that connection with, with heritage, tradition, ancestry, roots. I think something is only appropriation if someone comes in and does not respect the path. If someone approaches a path that is not of their background and they come to that path to follow that path with respect, with a genuine desire to understand and to learn the ways of that path and you know if that person um, comes in uh, in a way that they are uh, what are the words that I'm looking for if they come in in a way that is you know uh, I can't even say it better than respectful really I don't see that as appropriation at all and, and this goes for, for any path, not just, you know, certain people that say, like, oh, I feel like, you know, this is getting watered down, you know, in hoodoo, because uh, some people believe, you know, you can't have, you know, people that aren't, you know, let's say black, or some people feel like if you're not, you know, Native American or in any of the cultures that are part of the um, amalgam of... of cultures that, that their beliefs came together to form um, hoodoo traditionally as it was formulated in history. Some people believe if you are not from those backgrounds you shouldn't be practicing hoodoo. I don't believe that. <coughs> and a lot of other people don't believe that either. You know, but some do. You, you'd be surprised. Another path that I find that, that you can sometimes be confronted with this kind of uh, exclusion or um, bias is uh, some people who practice you know Teutonic magic and religion you know the Norse way the northern way some feel that uh, oh well if you're not you know Norse Germanic or something such similar you shouldn't be practicing it I don't think that's true Again, I feel um, it's about respect. Are you respecting the religion, you know, or the path or the practice? Um, are you really um, devoting to it a sincere desire to learn? You know what? Because what? Who cares about? you know, where your body came from, you know, you are, you are spiritual, you know, you are a soul, your, your physical body and its origins on earth don't have anything to do with your spirit or your mind, okay? Um, I also personally believe that all people are one people, that we all originated as one, and we all gradually over time we all spread out about the earth and then we evolved according to where you know each group of us kind of settled you know we adapted kind of like animals evolve in nature you know and you will get for example like uh, take squirrels you'll get like you know black squirrels over here and you'll get like flying squirrels over here and you'll get like red squirrels over here and, you know like and they're all unique but they all started as one and then when they divided into different areas they adapted to the local area that they came to settle in 
and they actually evolved physically, but they all share the same roots. Maybe I'm wrong, but based on um, a lot of documentaries and things that I've seen, I have reason to believe that all people far enough back. We're all one people. And even if you don't believe that, um, I think there's some validity to the idea that we are not our physical bodies. We are spiritual and we are, you know, mental beings where our bodies were born and raised where, you know, that has nothing to do with your, your mind or your feelings or, you know, how you go about your life. So, I don't find any, any reason to believe that um, divinity would really give a shit, <coughs> excuse me, what nationality or culture or whatever you happen to come from. You know, if you're going to follow a path, especially one that may not be the path of your um, heritage or your nationality or what have you, you know. And then some people, like myself, you're kind of unable to necessarily um, follow the path of your people because, you know, take me, I'm Portuguese. And my mother and her side of the family especially, they exhibit um, a lot of Lusitanian traits. You know, my mother's eyes are green, her skin is very fair, you know, very Celtic traits. You know, her parents, gray eyes, hazel eyes, you know, all that whole side of the family. They have traits that are not, um, they're not traditionally uh, are not uh, expected in Portuguese people as much. I could be wrong, but at least from my perspective, usually you expect um, dark-eyed, dark-haired people for the most part um, with a sort of sort of olivey kind of or medium sort of skin tone, but my mother is like really, really crazy fair. I mean, her skin is like pink undertoned. My mom looks like she would... Uh, she could pass for somebody who was maybe Celtic or even even another culture, like maybe even Polish or something. But her family, and she was born blonde. Her hair got darker with age. Um, but the traits she's exhibiting are traits that are uh, Lusitanian in nature. Now, I didn't do any DNA testing on my family, so I can't prove that there's Lusitanian roots. But I have reason to believe that there are. The problem with trying to follow the mythology of the Lusitanians or the practices or whatever of the Lusitanians is that they're kind of lost to time. So, um, yeah, some people would say, so because they were a federation of Celts, you know, follow the Celtic path. Um, I could see where that, where that uh, might appeal to some. And I'm not saying I don't practice any elements of, of Celtic spirituality or magic, you know, I, I do to a degree, you know, I practice more of an amalgam of things because I'm a chaos magician and we um, kind of borrow from many paths. But I think it's not about staying in your little box with people that are like you, or, you know, it's not about, like, I have to practice within the confines of my ethnicity or my culture, or so on and so forth. Spiritual spirituality is deeper than that. It's not about physicality. It's not about location. It's not about, um, you know, it's not about all that kind of stuff that some people, you know, really advocate that I feel is very divisive, I think it shouldn't come into the equation. Now, if, if it resonates with you to follow the ways of your ancestry, you know, then by all means do. There's nothing wrong with that. 
but maybe don't close your mind to the ways of others that may also appeal to you as well. It's not like you can only follow one path and you can't, you know, learn about another or you can't practice, let's say, a dual path. You know, some people do. Or um, it's not to say that if for whatever reason you don't find that the methods or practices of a path that is from your heritage, if they don't necessarily work for you, you know, if that doesn't resonate with you or whatever, let's say for whatever reason it just doesn't, it doesn't click for you, that's not to say you can't look elsewhere, you know, for enlightenment. Or let's say you don't find religion or spirituality or magic for you at all. It's not to say you can't say, I honor my ancestry, I honor my heritage, but this is this whole religion thing or this magic thing or whatever it is. That's not to say you can't say, well, that's not for me. I just think, um, I think really uh, people should, <coughs> well, I can't say what they should, <coughs> because who am I to say what they should, but um, I think it all comes down to taking a moment uh, to realize that we are more than our bodies, we are more than our origins, okay, and um, I also think that though some people worry about appropriation, as long as others are coming to a path with respect and they're not um, approaching that path to try to like exploit it or to try to, you know, I don't know, get it all twisted in a sense, like they're not running out there claiming to be of a path and then teaching others things that are not of that path. As long as they're not doing things like that, I don't think there's anything wrong with someone who is not from that cultural heritage coming to that path. Um, and I think that people also should remember, maybe, well, there's that word again, should. I think that maybe people um, might want to consider as well that um, paths and practices and traditions, they've stood the test of time. Um, some people may worry that outside influences may come in and, like, you know, change those paths and twist those paths and, you know, maybe water down traditions or whatever. I don't think that... <coughs> I don't think that um, there is as much of a danger of that happening as is feared. Changes on that scale, number one, usually take insane amounts of time. Also, um, changes to a tradition, they're only effective if others adopt those changes. Now whether someone chooses to adopt a new idea or thought, well, that's up to the people who choose to adopt it. But everything has a starting point, and everything will evolve naturally on its own. Every path has, and every path will. Whether that's good or bad, um, only time can tell. But I think, I think ultimately, um, Practices, traditions, paths should not be about division according to who or what someone is. You know, there shouldn't be division. Spirituality and magic, they're so much deeper than that. 
for me, <coughs> I've always seen spirituality and magic as a quest for truth and self-mastery and the betterment of the self and also the world. So I think um, I think there's really no room for um, for exclusion, for division, for judgment. But these are just my thoughts. I would love to hear what you have to say. I would love to hear your you know thoughts, feelings, <coughs> excuse me, comments, questions, etc. Um, so if you have any of those, uh, please put them in the comment box. And I hope that I've given you some food for thought. And with that, I, I wish you blessed be and ashe. And I'll see you all next time.